This lesson deals with power in purely resistive, capacitive, and inductive circuits. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 16, starting on page 11. Let's first consider a purely resistive circuit with our default value of the voltage phasor and the current phasor. But for a resistive circuit, the angle between voltage and current is zero. In other words, they're in phase with each other. So the angle of theta sub i is the same as the angle of theta sub v. If we go back to page two of this chapter, our definition of power absorbed in general was p plus p cosine of two omega t minus q times the sine of two omega t. We could pull out a p here and have one plus the cosine of two omega t. Now, what is the real power? Well, it's the product of the voltage and the current in RMS times the cosine of the difference between the angle of the voltage and the angle of the current, and that's gonna multiply then this term one plus cosine two omega t. The value of Q is the voltage times the current in RMS, but then times the sine of the angle between the voltage and the current. But because these are in phase, we're taking the sine of zero, which is equal to zero. So all we have then is VRMS times IRMS times one plus the cosine of two omega t. So we could graph that. So when t is equal to zero, the cosine is equal to one. So we're gonna multiply this by two. Of course, the cosine can be equal to minus one. That's gonna make this equal to zero over here and over here. We have a frequency that's twice what we started with. So here's two periods, which would indicate twice the frequency. Now this is always a positive number and the average value would be right here in the center, which is equal to VRMS times IRMS. Now, if we look at a capacitive circuit using our same definitions of power, this time for a capacitance, it's the voltage times the current, and then the cosine of the difference between the voltage and the current. But remember back in chapter eight on page 15, we said that the current and the voltage were related by a relationship. And if you recall, it was Eli the Iceman. And so here I've got the angle of the current, it's gonna be 90 degrees ahead of the voltage. In other words, the I, C, and E. So the difference of the voltage minus the current would be the theta of the voltage, and minus 90 degrees plus theta sub v, and that's equal to minus 90 degrees. So in our definition for power absorbed, we now have the cosine of minus 90, and then the sine of minus 90. But the cosine of 90 plus or minus is equal to zero. So then the power absorbed by the capacitance is equal to VRMS times IRMS times the sine of twice omega t. So let's sketch that. But because you have a sine wave, we'll be above and below the axis, an equal amount for each period we have. And of course, we've got twice the frequency here. So we'll have one cycle and then another cycle. The average is equal to zero. And again, here's energy absorbed and here's energy generated or extracted. This would again also be plotted in steady state. Last, to take a look at power in a purely inductive circuit. And again, back to chapter eight, this time on page 14, the relationship between voltage and current for an inductance is uh, Eli. In other words, the voltage is ahead of the current by 90 degrees. So for our angle of current, it would be the angle of voltage minus 90 degrees. So the difference between the voltage and the current then would be a plus 90. So going back to our power absorbed in general, now we have the cosine of 90 and the sine of 90. Cosine of 90 is equal to zero, so this term drops out. And the sine of 90 is just equal to one. We've got VRMS times IRMS, then times the sine of twice omega t. Again, let's graph that. But the minus sign here will have a flipped sine wave. And again, we'll have two cycles because we've got twice the frequency. So again, we have an average value equal to zero. We have energy extracted or generated and energy stored. Again, this is in steady state. So the energy is built up in the inductance and then you can eventually take it out, put it back in, take it back out, put it back in. What's important to note here for capacitive and inductive circuits is that we don't absorb any average power. We just simply have a reactive power term and not a real power term. This will be handy in doing some power factor correction. And this is power in purely resistive, capacitive, inductive circuits.